All right, right on folks, John Crane here in the shop, and today I'm working on these redwood tables. And specifically, I wanna show you how I apply the epoxy on these tables. Now, if you wanna go back and see how I flatten these, you can go back and watch my last two videos where I show how to build a router sled and a router table. I'll put a link to those videos in the description. While you're there, drop a comment, like, subscribe, you know, the whole nine yards. All right, now there are many different ways of applying an epoxy finish, and I use a variety of ways depending on how I want the finished product to turn out. Now, in this case, on these redwood tables, I am not going for that eighth inch sheet of glass look. Now that has its time and it has its place. It's good on a bar top. Or check out this ping pong table I did a few years ago. Now in this case, I did a big pour. It was a self-leveling pour. And I got about an eighth inch build of epoxy. And that is great for that application. But for these redwood tables, I am a big fan of that hand rubbed oil finish look on wood. I really like that. I'm not a huge fan of the thick layer of epoxy. So if you look at this right now, it looks like a sheet of glass, but I am in the process of putting several thin coats of epoxy on this table with a roller. I sand in between coats, and then ultimately I will put a top coat of wipe on poly on the top of this. So essentially I'm using the epoxy to soak into the pores of this redwood. Now this is end grain and this is really soaking up a lot of epoxy. And that's kind of how I like to use epoxy is put as much on as the wood will absorb and then sand it smooth and then put a coat of wipe on poly on the top and that turns into a real durable finish and with that wipe on poly you can put a coat of that on anytime you want to refresh the look of that table today i am using total boat tabletop epoxy now i also like using west system epoxy but for the nature of this redwood, it has a very open porous end grain and it's going to drink up a lot of epoxy. And the total boat epoxy is a little bit thicker and it's not gonna suck up as much. It also is less expensive than the West System epoxy. All right, here are a few tips to consider in detail. Now you wanna have your room temperature between 70 and 80 degrees. If you don't have the room temperature high enough, your epoxy might not set up and the last thing you wanna be doing is scraping that epoxy off of your project. All right, and now if you want your epoxy to run a little bit smoother, there's some techniques to do that. One is to put the epoxy into a water bath and heat that epoxy up. I like to just set it on a bench next to my wood stove. I let that heat up for a couple hours and that gets the epoxy nice and thin and easy to spread with a roller. One thing to note when heating up your epoxy is that it is going to kick off a little bit faster, so you're gonna to have to work a little bit quicker. All right, you're also gonna to wanna to get some good mixing containers with some gradation marks on the side. Now this Total Boat tabletop epoxy is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. You're gonna to wanna to hit that right on the head, get that exact and mix it very thoroughly. Once you think you're done mixing, mix it a little bit more, scrape the sides, get it thoroughly mixed. All right, now when it's go time, you wanna make sure you have some things ready ahead of time such as gloves, brushes, rollers. You want a map gas torch. You want some acetone for cleanup. I tell you, there's nothing worse than having your epoxy mixed up and ready to rock and roll and you can't find your roller. Now, speaking of rollers, I like to use these fiberglass resin roller covers made by Red Tree. Now these go for about 14 bucks a pop, so I like to cut these into thirds with the multi-tool. And then I put these onto a smaller roller handle. Before I do that, I like to take a lighter and torch any frayed ends so I don't get any residue into the epoxy. All right, here we go. The first coat of epoxy that I'm putting on is the seal coat on the bottom of these rounds. And I tell you, these rounds are just drinking up this epoxy like Gatorade on a football field. 
And you can see here, I am just spreading the epoxy around with an eighth inch piece of plywood. I'm not really concerned with spreading this around with a roller right now, as this wood is just drinking it up. So I'll let this cure overnight. All right, here now, it's the next day. That bottom has cured. I'm flipping this round over, doing the old He-Man. Actually, this wood isn't very heavy. It is quite dry. It's been drying for several years. So now I'm going to prep the top surface. I'm just blowing off any residual dust, and we will do the same process on the top of the round. Now this redwood bark is extremely thirsty as well, so I'm going to put a coat over the whole perimeter of the bark. Alright, good morning folks. It's the next day and the seal coat that we put on top of our round is nice and dry. So now we have a seal coat on the top of the round, on the bottom, on the edge of the bark. Everything is nice and sealed. That's going to prevent air bubbles from coming through. So the next step is to sand this. I'm going to sand the top. I'm also going to hand sand the bark so there's no little prickly thing sticking out. I want this to feel really nice to the touch. All right, so I'm going to get busy. I'm going to sand this, then I'm going to mix up some epoxy, and I'm going to roll that out here on the top. All right, let's rock and roll. <music> Top of the morning to you, Roy. Using some CA glue. This is some 2P10 thick super glue, and I'm filling in some of these deeper open cracks. Just getting a jump start on these. It's nice to do this now. You can fill these with epoxy, and if you do fill these all the way up with epoxy, sometimes they go all the way through to the bottom. You can seal the bottom with this. This is this HVAC aluminum tape. And that is great for sealing up those cracks. It really sticks good to the wood. You can also use Tyvek tape, but I always seem to be using this and it works out just fine. All right, it's time to roll on our first coat with the roller. This is gonna be a nice thin coat. I mixed up 16 ounces of epoxy, eight ounces per table. Now I'm gonna roll this out with this small roller. And as you see here, as I'm rolling it out, it gives it a little bit of a stippled look. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna come back with a map gas torch, heat the epoxy, and help that to level out. Aside from leveling the epoxy, the map gas torch also helps to pop any air bubbles that are in the epoxy. Sometimes they come from the roller, and sometimes they rise right out of the grain of the wood. All right, our second coat here has dried nicely and you can see it is still absorbing that epoxy in some places. So we're gonna put another coat right on top of this one.
All right, here's what it looks like after sanding. Now this is sanding after our second roll on coat and it's looking pretty good. There's a couple little voids here and there that need filling in and some places where there were some air bubbles. I'm gonna touch up some of these bigger ones, just dab some epoxy on there and hit it with a torch. If you're lucky, sometimes you can reuse these mixing cups by peeling out the leftover epoxy in these after it's dry. So you can pull that right out and then you got a nice clean mixing cup. Look at this folks, this is looking nice and smooth now. The end grain is pretty well filled in with epoxy. And I gotta say this end grain is quite a different animal than just a regular flat slab of wood. It really sucks up a lot of epoxy and it takes a lot to fill in all this end grain and get all the air bubbles out and all the little cracks. But right now, this is looking great. On a regular slab of wood, it might not take this many coats to get to this state. So you just gotta observe your wood and see how many coats it's gonna take to get it done. So right now I am ready to put another thin coat on top of here. I have the epoxy over by the wood stove heating up. It's nice and warm right now. So that's gonna enable it to be nice and runny. So I'm gonna roll on another coat. I'll sand that and then we'll do our top coat of white bomb poly. on some sanding pads, a hand sanding pad. I've had a couple of these for years. They are great. I just ordered in a new set by Duragold and I use six inch hook and loop for my sander. And this is great because you can just use your six inch hook and loop right on these pads. Just set these down and you have a nice sanding block right there. It's got some form fitted things for your fingers. I'll put the link to this in the description. Definitely get a set of these if you got the hook and loop for your regular sander. All right, so now I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna go around the perimeter of the bark and just make sure I got this all smooth around the edges. All right, now I'm getting ready for the wipe on poly. So I'm gonna go over the whole surface with the air gun and then I'm gonna wipe down the top with a tack cloth. All right, now the time has come to put a coat on of wipe on poly. I am using the Minwax wipe on poly. Now, wipe on poly is just essentially polyurethane cut with some mineral spirits. That's all it is. And I am using the clear satin. This has some ground up silica in it. It takes a little bit of that sheen away, gives it a nice satin look. I really like that. Now, because it has that ground up silica in it, you wanna give it a really good shake here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this cup, I'm gonna pour a little bit in here, and then with a brush, I'll go around the perimeter, do the bark, and then I'll wipe some over the top. All right, this is always a fun time in the process, putting these final coats on and you really see the grain come out. It's a really nice reveal of the grain. So always exciting to pour on a little wipe on poly. I'm just putting this on with a cloth, All right? Look at that redwood coming out, it's beautiful. 
beautiful. Such a nice looking slab of tree here, huh? Gorgeous. So I'll probably end up putting a, a couple coats on. I'll put this coat on right now. I got the wood stove going and I'll come back here in a few hours. Look how nice that looks. I was saying I'll come back in a few hours after this has dried and I'll put another coat on. Just gorgeous, look at that. What an amazing looking table, huh? All right, I ended up putting two coats of the Satin Wipe On Poly, and this third coat I'm rubbing on is the Clear Gloss Wipe On Poly. And this will give it a nice semi-satin look, you know? I changed things along the way. Now I wanted to bring out a little bit more shine. You know, it's your painting. You want to put a nice little happy tree right in the center, you go right ahead. All right, right on folks, look at that table. It looks just amazing. If you can see it in person, it is just so beautiful. I hope these pictures do it justice. And I hope you can see in these pictures that it doesn't look like an eighth inch sheet of glass like some of those thick epoxy pours. I really don't care for that look. I really like this hand rubbed oil finish look and that we achieved that here. It just looks dynamite. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, tell your buddies, tell your friends. All right, hope you're doing great, and I'll see you soon. All right, right on.